Welcome back to another episode. I am the Colonialist and this is my Fidole Noda colony from Ants R Us. Now I know some of you might be wondering what's happened to my previous colony of Fidole Noda that I showed you from Ants HQ. Well they had a slight colony crash after I moved them, forced moved them into a nest. Probably wasn't the best decision I ever made. I then moved them into a natural formicarium to try and help them recover and I'm not entirely sure what's happened to them since. So I may end up with two colonies which is even better. I'm putting this colony into this Wakushi MS 3.5 nest. It's a 3D printed nest with a gypsum insert. It will help me provide the perfect environment for this colony as well as being able to keep an eye on their progress. So I'm going to hook up the test tube now and let them explore their brand new space and move into what could possibly be their new home. Some of you may be thinking that this nest is too large for the size of this colony and that they may use some of the chambers as a refuge chamber. Now that is a possibility. However, I have thought about this and I decided to give them options. Now this came about quite simply because I didn't actually have the correct tubing for the 15mm ports on the Wakushi nest to the 10mm ports on the Amphoy UK Outworlds. But that led me to also think, hold on, why don't I use the Venus nest as a feeding station and Outworld? I've been using it as a feeding station with my other colonies. I was supposed to show that today with the Polyacus Bives. However, half of that footage corrupted and I'm in a bit of a pickle on that episode. So I decided to move forward the Ansaros Fidole Noda episode instead moving in to the Wakushi nest. I have also moved the competition that's been offered to the end of this video. So stay tuned for that to see who won. Fidole Noda are a great species and I can't wait to do my Karabara versus Fidole. No, not an ant war. I'm going to be doing a statistical matchup between the two species, similarities and differences. Fidole noda, their queens are between four to five millimeters. Some places say they're 13 millimeters, but they're roughly the same size as the soldiers. The soldiers are four to five millimeters and the workers are three to five millimeters. There's a difference between the caste system, which this has workers and soldiers, to the polymorph system, which has uh, minor workers, media workers and majors, slightly different system. I could explain that in a future video. If you're interested, let me know in the comments and I'll go into the difference between castes and polymorphism. Fidole noda are noted to be a fast growing species, but their colony size is between three to four thousand workers so they're not massive they won't take up a lot of space which makes them great to care for however they are good escape artists so you'll have to be wary of that and keep them in setups that are going to keep them contained here you can see the difference between the workers and the soldiers there's quite a difference in body shape although not that much difference in length the soldiers are obviously quite stocky and built like tanks whereas the workers are quite light and nimble and they have really cool shaped legs, I think. So in offering a variety of environments, what I'm ensuring here is that the colony are going to get their humidity levels right. So they like it between 50 to 80% humidity and heat wise between 24 to 28 degrees Celsius. I'm currently keeping this colony at 26 degrees Celsius. One thing that I noted is the sugar tube after 48 hours they've started to use this as their trash pile which is positive because it means they might not use the ms 3.5 nest they will probably come here and dump their trash at the sugar once it starts to turn this tube's been here for 48 hours and now it's time to change the tube because i fear any longer the sugar might start to decay and that could push it out and leak or it could cause other problems if they start pulling at the cotton. So it's always good to keep these tubes refreshed. You don't need to do as much as I did. It was just easier to do this amount. I prefer to keep it full so that they've got the full amount. All you've got to do is pop out the tube. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky depending on how well stuck they are and then place in a piece of cotton to stop any of the workers escaping. I didn't need to use anything to keep it pushed against the hole. It stayed there quite nicely which was really nice 
Once I got the tube out, I realized there was a worker attached to it. So I just lifted off the cap and shook her back in. Luckily she fell through the hole and she ran straight into the nest. Now I'm just gonna pop off to the kitchen. I'm gonna change the tube for a new sugar tube and I'm just gonna reattach that tube and show you how simple this method is. I personally think this is a great method to feed your colonies and I'm actually gonna promote the use of this product as a feeding station as well as a nest. Now what you can see is they can use the far left tube, far left tube as a nest. The far right tube is a hydration tube and the middle tube obviously is their sugar tube. And then through the outworld, I've just been dropping in protein in the source of a cockroach nymph. You can feed these species seeds, but it's supposed to be very small seeds like millet, chia seed or sesame seed, soft seeds that they can break into. I've also spoken to Akushi about getting the three port version made for me which is what I'm getting done now. As you can see from here, what I would like to do as well as keeping them hooked up to the nest is attach an outworld, but I've only got one port and I find it personally easier just to port off from this product than to start putting in connection pieces and, and obviously using up more space because the length of this actually uses up the entire shelf that it sits on. Three ports give me so many more options because I can literally attach another Venus nest to the side or I can attach an outworld off to the side which is what I plan to do in this case. With a few species now I've tried this sort of multi nest approach where I've hooked up a colony but I've given them a, a varied choice in where they want to go and nest. With the Solenopsis I gave them an acrylic nest and I also gave them a natural uh, pod in one of the vortex outworlds and that had great success so it's something I might look at going forward is continuing something like this where I can offer a test tube and a nest give the ants the option to go back and forth which should give me greater success less chance of colony crashes less stress less problems and a better time of ant keeping it's quite amazing to see the difference between these workers I could watch this colony all day long so I'm very excited to have got this colony and I just want to say thank you again so much Chris for sending these out thank you Wakushi for the nest and for helping me with what you've been doing lately I'm very excited for future projects last week I said name an ant species without the letter a in the name and I got so many fantastic responses. Thank you everyone who got involved. Even if you didn't, thank you for just dropping the comment which got you entered. This week, I'm going to say, can you name a fungus farming species of ant? Now, this could just be for fun. I want not the genus, but the entire species name, which would be great. Last week, I got so many fantastic comments. Here's just a few of them. You didn't have to answer the question to get involved. It was just a bit of fun just to encourage you to leave a comment because what I was doing is using a comment random randomizer selector or whatever it is, and it chose the comments to pick the winners. So in fact, it has picked three winners, three comments. The first being Jason Walker with Messor Structor. Thank you very much. You have won. Let me know your details and I'll get that out to you. The second is Jinx72. Congratulations on winning the colony. Just let me know that you want them and you're eligible and I'll get that out to you. And third is Stein Kroon. Again, congratulations. Thank you very much for your comment. And as long as you are all eligible, I will get these colonies out to you. If you are not eligible or you don't want to take on the commitment of this species, that's not a problem. Just let me know and I will re-roll re this competition. For those of you who come on, comment on this video, I will get that out to you. I don't know what's happening right now. I, I can't talk. <laughs> so it's, it's quite late at night and I've also been struggling with the other episode, which absolutely drove me nuts when it corrupted. So it's been quite a push to get this episode out to you guys. Thank you again, Ants Davey, for offering up this competition that I can offer to the community so that you guys who follow this channel can benefit. Much love to you all. If you want to support the channel, check me out at my website, thecolonialist.co.uk. And until next time, I'll catch you then, guys. Thank you again. See you then.